Lil Nar, also known as Narcotic Caleb, is a founder of a clothing brand turned rapper who has his hands in many different parts of the industry. From rappers rocking his clothing brand to some of the big name features he's gotten, you would think he'd be a bigger artist than he is. But that's the secret to Nar's success, networking, which you soon will find out when we look into the story of Lil Nar. Caleb Shepard was born in California on February 24th, 1996. He grew up in a single parent household being raised by his mother and grandmother in a very religious setting. His father did have other children, but none of them grew up alongside Caleb, so he's basically raised as an only child. He spent the first 10 years of his life in California, but at the age of 11, he moved to Atlanta, and once he arrived there, he began skateboarding and smoking weed full time, choosing to skip class most days so he could spend time working on his skills. He was pretty naturally talented at skateboarding, but his time doing it didn't come without injuries. One time he popped his finger bone through his skin. You see this line right here? My pinky bone had like popped through the skin, like the skin kind of like unwrapped from the the bone like, like a chicken fillet. And in another time, he actually ended up in a wheelchair for two months. In this time in his life, he was also introduced to all sorts of drugs, Xanax, Coke, and even Molly, which he started selling on the side for a bit of extra money. One thing a young Nar knew is that no matter what, he couldn't work a nine to five. So he started brainstorming ideas to make money. He first started off by getting sponsored by a couple skate shops, even hoping to open his own at one point. But his real million dollar idea came when his friend and fellow rapper Germ began selling his own brand of shirts. Once Nar found out about this, he got right to work creating his own brand, Narcotic, meant to be a combo of gnarly and narcotic, representing Nar's addiction to the street life. At first things were tough for Nar, he had to travel all over the city just to push his products in hopes of getting it in stores, but Atlanta wasn't accepting it at first, so Nar made a calculated move realizing most kids in the scene often wore what the most popular rappers were rocking. And of course at first he wasn't going to get future young thug to wear his clothes, so he turned his attention to the Florida wave with the upcomers Puya and Fat Nick. Nar started sending them free shirts in the mail and because of that, they started rocking them, helping to build narcotics influence in the hip hop world. Soon after that, Lil Skies would hit him up and tell him he also rocked with the brand. And through their joint love of clothing and skateboarding, they became fast friends, eventually leading Disguise getting a narcotic tattoo on his hand. Nar's connections wouldn't stop there though, because in 2016, he actually spent the summer living with Lil Peep before either one of them had hit it big. Not long after that, the brand started popping off and the money started rolling in, allowing him to buy himself a Porsche outright with no finance plan. It seems like at this point, Nar had made it. He was successful, he was a business owner, he had a solid street brand and a loving girlfriend who goes by Hypey Wifey to keep him grounded, but he still wanted more. He wanted to rap, and with his diverse musical taste, he had a lot of different avenues to pull from to create music. He listened to Kendrick Lamar, Future, Young Thug, Pharrell, a lot of different types of people. In the three years it took to build Narcotic up, he had secretly been recording music for two of them, but he never dropped anything, waiting for the perfect moment to do so. When the time came, he cleared his Instagram of all narcotic-related posts and attempts to rebrand himself as the rapper Lil Nar. He did this because he wanted to be seen as a true rapper and not a corny fashion designer who hopped on a wave. Now, Nar actually did have a few prior tracks from past years like bb and t a collaboration song with germ and rob banks that dropped in 2016 back when nar was still going under the narcotic caleb name it seems Nar met Banks through a mutual clothing connection and became part of a group he was in called Smart Stennis, but his official start in music was his track Rihanna Thick and Beating Down Your Door featuring Shakewell. <laughs> He immediately followed that up with his collab EP with Germ called Big Bad Nar Shit, with the lead single on that tape, Ride With The Fire, getting a world star music video, gaining big numbers in his first week. Being associated with Germ got him a lot of clout in the trap metal field, and he even had a Made in Tokyo feature on the same tape with the track Sticky Rice. This track was followed up with the Lil Skies featured track, Drop Top Bent. After a couple social media stunts like getting shot with a bulletproof vest and destroying a TV, Nar was off to the races to be a big rapper. He was also relentless on Worldstar, dropping tracks like Laker Guap, Samurai Shit, and Narcotic Gang. And this all led up to his debut mixtape, Narlite, which he released under 10k projects after signing with them in mid-2018, receiving a 10k chain upon signing. This tape had big name features like Lil Skies, Zilla Kami, and even Travis Barker. The Zilla track in particular, named Man Down, got Nar even more clout in the trap metal scene. <laughs> and a lot of people were starting to see him as the next big trap metal artist. He followed his first tape up with multiple appearances in No Jumper Vlogs, interviews with Mars Files and DJ Vlad, a music video for his track Grave with Little Skies, and even a European tour by the end of the year. His 2019 was equally as successful, dropping his biggest track ever, Octane Sex. <laughs> 
It's followed up by a mixtape called Fire Hazard. This tape had a particularly important track on it named Death Note featuring Lil Skies and Craig Zent, which went on to get a lyrical lemonade video in the summer of the same year. At this point you would think it'd be over, no question, Lil Nair would be blown up into the big time, but despite all the success he had, he never went to the mainstream. So why is this? Well, one possible reason is he actually went through a name change at the time, just going by Nair instead of Lil Nair, so maybe people couldn't find his prior music, or maybe it's the fact that he didn't do a whole lot of clout antics online. But either way, this is basically the biggest moment in his entire career, but that doesn't mean it's all over, this is just basically the end of his initial wave. By the end of 2019, fans were eagerly awaiting Nair Life 2, but 2020 was a bit of a quieter year for Nair. He did drop another EP with Germ called Big Bad Nair Shit Part 2, but this wasn't really the project that fans were waiting for. But he didn't drop much until October, when big news would come. He actually managed to meet Lil Uzi Vert at the Dooley music video shoot and secured a big name feature. They dropped their track together later that month named Diamond Choker. Taking your hope my dick in the and I don't really care what people say, this track is an absolute banger, but you can really start to hear the old metal Nair working his way out and the new slime Atlanta Nair coming in. Either way though, this track began an absolutely legendary feature run from Nair. He followed that song up with an internet money produced track featuring Lil Keed called Hey. He then hey. Then closed off the year by appearing on DJ Scheme's family album on a track featuring Shakewell. Once 2021 started, he kept the run going, dropping Missiles featuring Trippy Red, followed by another Lil Skies featured track called Not the Same. And with the release of this track, Nar officially became an independent artist, ending his deal with 10K Projects. And for a while, he funded his music with his clothing brand, even getting an article written about it. But he was still looking for a new label, asking Young Thug to sign him before the whole uh, Rico case. I think he really dodged the bullet with that one. He finally found his new home after dropping the track. Track, new Bugatti with Ski Master Slump God and Chief Keef. He, he didn't immediately sign to the label, but the seeds were planted for their friendship to grow. At this point, fans were absolutely begging for Nar Life 2, but instead, Nar revealed he'd be dropping a different project called Die About It. Dropping two more singles that year called No Regular and Skelly, but with no big name features, they didn't make as much noise as his prior run. He was quiet again in 2022 until May of that year when he dropped a track with young bands called My Brothers. A few weeks after that, he finally dropped Die About It with even more big name features like Tory Lane and Yak Gotti, and then he would reveal to fans that Nar Life 2 was actually completed, but the hard drive it was on was actually stolen. So instead of spending his time trying to re-record the same songs, not capturing the same magic, he decided to drop a whole new project instead. It would confirm with fans though that it was still in the way. The very next month, Nar confirmed he was signed to Chief Keef's label, 43B, basically spelling the end of his career as a trap metal artist. I'm not gonna lie, it was probably over long before this point. This is one of the reasons that Nar has somewhat of a bad reputation in the trap metal scene. He joined up with Germ, dropped some songs in that genre, got his foot in the the door and then switched over to a more Atlanta style rap once he was popping. The whole argument with Post Malone doing rap music and then switching to country, 6 9 doing rap music and then switching to Latin is the same thing with Nair and Trap Metal. To be honest with you, I don't really mind this since he said in interviews he's always had a varied style of rap and he grew up on different sounds, but I do have to admit I wish he'd drop at least one more Trap Metal project before completely moving on. It seems like signing with Keith was actually a pretty good move for him. Some rappers like to sign with other rappers in hopes of getting a more personal touch on their career, but it never really seems to work out because the other rapper is too big and doesn't have enough time to actually shadow them. Keef and Nair always seem to be pretty close together and it's almost coming off like Nair is kind of the star of Chief's new label and I think it's working out for both of them. It hasn't stopped him from getting big name features because him and G Herbo actually dropped a track not too long ago so it seems like things are still going good for him. Nair has basically carved out a little piece of the rap game for himself. He stayed consistent, kept dropping music, fed his fans. He never made it to the mainstream or got all that big but it doesn't seem like he really needs that because the money's rolling in on both the fashion brand and the music and he's just living life. But honestly, Honestly, the guy should probably quit sipping lean like I'm not one to say what he should do or not do with his free time but the guy's always flexing lean nowadays and it's like you're the only rapper still doing that you should probably just get off the stuff or at least don't advertise it online but fuck it that's their persona I can't tell him how to live his life I'm just saying it comes off as a little weird but it is what it is I love Lil Nar either way I think he's a great artist whether he's doing the Atlanta sound or the trap metal sound but one thing I'm very interested to hear is how other people feel about him because he seems to have a very mixed persona online it seems like people either hate him or love him and I'd like to know why you love him or why you hate him or why you just don't care about him. Like I said, I think it comes down to the fact that a lot of people see him as jumping off a trap metal as soon as he got big or it's something like he's kind of corny or fake for getting into the game the way he did. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it seems like people don't like the guy, so I really want to know why. But with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a knife emoji in the comments below as well as a purple emoji to show Nara that he needs to get off the lean. No, I'm just kidding, but for real, subscribe because I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. And also, if you want to contact me, I got an Instagram account. I got a discord server so either one of those work links in the description for all that and I have a second channel where I do interviews sorry I've been a little bit behind on those but I'm trying to get caught up now so if you want one hit me up but for now thanks for watching bye